We're at the middle of another storm of AI announcements, and this morning Microsoft jumped on the bandwagon with its event announcing Copilot Wave 2. But were we in for something resembling a tsunami, or was this going to be more of a dribble? Keep watching to find out what got announced and what it should mean for you as a Microsoft 365 Copilot user, or maybe someone who's still on the fence about bringing Copilot to your organization. First, a quick introduction. My name is Nick DeCorsi. I'm the owner of Bright Ideas Agency, a digital transformation consulting company focused on the needs of smaller businesses. Check out the links below if you're interested in learning more about me or my services. It's pretty much exactly 18 months since Microsoft 365 Copilot was announced, shaking up what work might look like in the future. And as we stand today, for many organizations, this is a product that has already had substantial impact, if not hitting the mark on everything it promised to be. The announcements for Wave 2 were certainly not as dramatic as that initial kickoff in the productivity AI race, and depending on how closely you've been watching other updates from Microsoft over the course of the last year, there may have been few things in this event that were actually new to you. The presentation was broken down into three main topics. Web plus work plus pages, a new experience for group AI interaction and ideation. Updates to Copilot across the Microsoft 365 apps and opportunities to build Copilot agents. Pages is a new experience for Copilot that seems to be built on the foundation of Microsoft Loop. The idea is that you can have an interaction with Copilot, either Copilot for the web or Copilot for work, now BizChat, and turn that response into a page. This page is a persistent surface that can be shared with others for collaboration in the flow of using AI co-pilots. You may look at this and think it looks somewhat similar to the new artifacts capability with Claude, but it's actually pretty different. And depending on what you're looking for, this might seem more limited or something that actually adds a lot of value beyond that. However, the idea of being able to take the output of your chats with Copilot and do something with them in some sort of low friction fashion is welcome. We shouldn't lose sight of, though, that what was promised last year by Microsoft's demos was the ability to push BizChat content to other M365 apps contextually, including Loop, which in my opinion makes significantly more sense than this new feature. We've already had a somewhat similar capability to use Copilot inside the collaboration surface that is a Loop workspace. However, this is going to be slightly different, as while the work-related and business data-grounded BizChat capability related to this will solely be coming to Microsoft 365 Copilot license users, it seems that the ability to work with Copilot pages will be coming to any user able to use Microsoft Copilot with a business account. This is Microsoft doubling down on granting essentially free AI access and added value to any Microsoft 365 licensed user. And this may well be relevant to organizations who are thinking about AI deployment for a subset of their users, but aren't sure Microsoft 365 Copilot is the right solution. This creates an AI foundation for all Microsoft 365 licensed users. The updates we saw for Microsoft 365 were largely not new. In fact, one of them, PowerPoint's new contextual creation capabilities, now apparently named Narrative Builder, was featured in a video I shared last week. I'll put a link to that down below. The demo shown today had some extra bells and whistles that weren't available when I demoed this feature last week, such as using grounding documents in topics, but it's unclear whether this specific element of what was shown off will be part of what starts to be rolled out now. Microsoft has been known to have some air between what it shows us and what it rolls out in terms of Copilot's actual capabilities. Copilot in Excel is moving from preview to GA. This might make you scratch your head as you've had access to Copilot in Excel since you got a Copilot license. 
But this is more to do with how Microsoft notates its releases in that the specific Copilot and Excel features had up until now continued to be regarded as in public preview rather than generally released alongside the rest of Copilot. The Copilot in Excel product has certainly evolved over the last year into something that is greatly more usable today than it was when I first started trying it out. And if this is something you've tried and dismissed in the past, now that it's GA is a good time to go back and review exactly how it can meet your needs. Copilot in Excel with Python was announced as a public preview. You may be aware that Python was added to Excel as a preview some months ago and was recently upgraded to be in a generally released product. This gives an added level of data analysis and manipulation capabilities beyond those you get in Excel and is an add-on license for Microsoft 365. However, with Copilot in Excel with Python, you get the added capability of turning natural language into Python code. Given that Python in Excel requires an extra paid license, it's unclear at this point what licensing will be needed with Copilot in Excel with Python. But for the public preview, it seems that you will require just a Microsoft 365 Copilot license if you choose to join the preview. In Outlook, we'll be getting some new capabilities like inbox prioritization, and we'll be able to teach Copilot what should be prioritized beyond a basic understanding of us, such as who is our manager or who are our direct reports or which threads we tend to be active in. This will be coming later this year. In Teams, many of us probably know by now that recaps and Copilot's general help will extend beyond the transcript to chat, and this was reaffirmed during this presentation. You may have already seen this roll out in your tenant. We also saw Word and OneDrive mentioned. In Word, we'll get more options for the types of grounding data we can work with, and you'll start to see this rolling out this month. And in OneDrive, we'll eventually all see the new Copilot features that I highlighted in a dedicated video that I'll link below. The last announcement was, in my opinion, the most impactful one. Before we look at that, though, if you're finding this video useful, it would be great if you'd give it a like. And if you want to see more like this, please do subscribe to the channel. Arguably the most important promise of Microsoft 365 Copilot that sets it apart from competitors purely in the AI space is the extensibility framework. And this is something I talk about a great deal here from the recognition that the greatest leaps AI will help us take will only come once we've managed to plug it into the myriad different systems and data sources businesses actually use. Sometimes something with the breadth of Microsoft 365 Copilot is what you want, but the reality is that often the fact it can see all your Microsoft 365 data is as much of a hindrance to getting exactly what you need as it is a help. Microsoft is not just taking one run at extensibility, it's deploying a wide gamut of different options to give users at practically any level of technical understanding tools that can help them get more value from Microsoft 365 Copilot. However, two previously announced but not yet delivered capabilities probably stood at the bottom of the extensibility mountain as the easiest initial footholds for anyone to use, and that was the ability to create a Copilot from data and bring in that Copilot into the contextual interactions you have in a tool like Teams to allow Copilot to be a participant and not just a lone helper. With Copilot agents, you can create these new capabilities directly from BizChat or your data, and they are backed by the huge potential and flexibility of everything you can do in Copilot Studio, but seem to be designed so you can get started with a few clicks without really worrying about all of those more complex, higher level features. For example, from SharePoint, you can create an agent that focuses in on particular data and then share that Copilot agent across a group of users to get answers from the right source. You can even add your agent to your team's chat and using app mentions get responses there. And if you're ready, you can use the power of Copilot Studio to extend its capabilities and then have the agent take actions on your behalf right from that chat. Interestingly, there were some agent type features that had been disclosed previously that weren't highlighted again here at this event, such as the idea of having Copilot in your meeting, keeping track of what's going on. Does this mean those features are vanishing? I believe when they were announced, it was highlighted that they would be in preview by the end of 2024. So there's not much time left. 
Regardless, I think the fact that Microsoft is focused on making it so easy to extend Copilot's value, particularly in relation to your existing Microsoft 365 data and connected systems, makes a huge amount of sense. In my recent video highlighting why Copilot is probably the right choice for most organizations that use Microsoft 365 and want AI, I looked into a number of reasons why these types of advances offer a lot of value because they come from a company like Microsoft rather than forcing your users to piece together their AI workflow through third party systems. I'll put a link to that video down below too. What's my opinion on all these updates though? We'll get to that next. But first, do you need help with Copilot adoption? Keeping on top of all these changes and making sure you get the best from them can be a really big challenge. Whether you're new to Copilot or you're needing help with an ongoing adoption or just looking for a strategic advisory partner to help you achieve the most with these technologies in the future, I welcome you reaching out to learn how my services will deliver value to you. Check out the links down below where you can find more information like my currently free AI adoption course for executives, alongside opportunities to book me on one-on-one -on -one technology coaching, group training, or project and consulting services, including Microsoft 365 Copilot adoption. Since March 2023, Microsoft's progress with Copilot has been amazing. They highlighted how they have made over 700 product updates, added 150 new features, and are just now moving its capabilities to GPT-40. Alongside this pace of change, they have also significantly enhanced their change communication, making it far easier to follow when product updates will happen and to prepare for new features. However, I think there is still room for improvement. The fact remains that while I have continued to be a proponent of Copilot, especially Microsoft 365 Copilot, as a tool to revolutionize business, and one that I think all organizations using Microsoft 365 should consider, I've also been critical of Microsoft and other tech companies for far too many excited presentations of what's coming and too little delivery of many of the features we've been waiting for. As we move from wave one to wave two, there continue to be features of Microsoft 365 Copilot that were literally shown to us 18 months ago that have not appeared in the product. And if we consider all the announcements since then, there is a significant backlog of capabilities that is unclear if or when they will be arriving. One thing I expected to hear today that we didn't was a licensing shift for Copilot to allow it to be bought in the same way as pretty much every other Microsoft license, to provide a free trial to those interested in using it, and to allow you to pay for it month to month, potentially even with a slightly higher priced month to month cancellable option. As we approach the anniversary of many organizations taking a bet on Copilot for 12 months, there will be many that jump at the chance to buy it again for year two because they are already seeing huge impact. But there will also be those who are on the fence because after their initial 12 month gamble, they aren't sure they've seen enough of a return. I have argued here that Copilot objectively is not that expensive when you consider the potential benefit, but given that a relatively small organization of 50 might be preparing for another $18,000 bill from Microsoft in January for Copilot, when their average monthly bill for Microsoft 365 is around $1,000, there is certainly a psychological hurdle that many responsible for their company's purse strings must clear before okaying that commitment. On top of this, we also need Microsoft to address the security elephants that are now in their Copilot room. You'll recall I made a video on research that showed Copilot can be hacked a couple of weeks ago, and if you didn't see that, there's a link below. I don't think, in the objective sense, this is necessarily a huge deal. I think there's a lot that we can do to address these issues with better end user training, much the same as we have for email threats. But right now, I don't think it would be unreasonable for us to see Apple as whooping Microsoft behind in the AI security conversation. And while Apple intelligence is in no way a direct competitor to Microsoft 365 Copilot, there may well be a lot of people that see that imbalance in airtime Microsoft is giving security issues versus Apple and incorrectly conceive this is an indictment of Microsoft's security posture when it comes to AI. As we jump on wave two of Copilot, is your organization sticking with it for the ride? Or perhaps you've never started and it's these new features that will convince you. 
let me know your thoughts down in the comments. Thanks for watching through to the end. Until the next video, bye bye.